am Inezalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today another exciting tutorial. We're going to see how to animate any kind of effect in Adobe After Effects using your audio. So we're going to take a look on our base and then using the values of our base, we're going to automatically change the values of our effect. Let's take a look on what I'm talking about and let's get started. Alright, so it's not the ideal footage that I'm using here, but you get the idea. I'm zooming into my footage, adding some blur, all using the audio values here. So that's pretty cool. Let's have a look on how we've done that. So I'm going to import my footage right here and drag this into a new composition. As you can see right here, I'm using our channel intro because I thought it could be a cool uh, way to actually use that one uh, for this uh, particular tutorial because I'm actually uh, talking here to a camera and a rapper would also be talking to a camera and this would be like the same kind of shot. It's not actually a music video, but I'm currently not working on a music video project. So and that's why I took this one here. Okay, so um, that being said, I'm going to just cover up my borders here because I actually want to animate my scale. And if we're going to scale this up, of course, we're going to see that on these borders. So that's not what we want. I will just create quickly a new solid layer, black. Okay, you, you don't have to follow along as just to cover up my own footage here. And then just I'm going to drag these, uh, this in here. something like this and I'm just going to subtract that and now if we're going to scale this up we're not going to get uh, the other borders affect uh, my view here so I have everything set up I will just pick this point here okay now I'm going to import my music I'm going to be using a beat from Levito. Levito has his own YouTube channel, which is pretty great. He allows you to use his beats for free in your YouTube projects or non-commercial projects. And, and yeah, just definitely check out his channel. It's pretty cool. And Levito, uh, Mr. No Jokes is a song that I will be using here. So I'm going to drag this into my composition and I will uncheck the audio for my original video here. So I just have... Um, this uh, setup. Okay, so now if you double tap L, uh, you're going to see the audio waveform for uh, his beat here. So right here we can see the peaks uh, for the bass and I'm going to drag this over. So we just have a call moment before it drops and then uh, we have some bass, bass, bass and so on. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And now what I want to do is change the actual waveform into values. So uh, this is going to be a lower value than this value. And then we're going to use these values to manipulate any kind of effect and uh, that we want to apply to our video. So what I will do first is uh, just fine tune my audio a little bit because currently I have my song, but I want to exaggerate a little bit in the bass so that if I convert the values to um, keyframes, um, it's going to be a little bit more intense and a little bit more, well, it's going to be easier to see. So I'm going to apply the bass and treble effect to my audio. And this is just temporarily, so it's not going to affect your final um, audio product. So I'm going, to in, um, I'm going to input for bass something like 75 and then just lower the treble to all the way uh, to min uh, minus 100. And now, of course, your audio is going to sound different, but that's not what um, yeah, we're doing this for. We're going to right click now and then we're going to keyframe assistance convert audio to keyframes once you have done that you can immediately go to your audio and just delete that effect or just uncheck it whatever floats your boat um, but now we're going to see if we click on that null that it just created so uh, it created a new null audio amplitude and this is going to create keyframes for the amplitude of our song here so we can see here the left channel, right channel, and both channels. I'm going to delete left and right because we just need both here. And I'm going to press U on the keyboard to see all these keyframes um, right here. If we're going to click on the slider and just uh, go into the graph editor, you're going to see these values here. So if we drag over this, you're going to see uh, right here the amount of the audio. So everything that is, uh, what is normal is a, around, my, well, it's below 30. And then once we have a beat, it's going to uh, around 60. Okay, there we go. Um, stays in 60 here. 70. And then all minus 30. 
and then again here is something like 80 and then it's going to a little bit heavier uh, over here so what I want to do now is just clean this a little bit up because it's very chaotic so we have all these different values and of course if I will link my scale to these values it's going to constantly be moving my scale so just to give you a little bit of an idea I'm going to press S on the keyboard here for my um, original video footage I'm going to alt click on stopwatch and I'm going to just parent this with this uh, slider um, and just um, see what it does. So now we're going to take the scale and the scale is going to be the exact same amount as the slider and of course it's going to be smaller when it's small so currently it's now at 20 scale and it's going to be constantly moving that's not what we want. So now if you want to actually well I'm going to drag this up first so basically what we want is the original scale plus the value of our slider. So what I will do here is before we have our temp comma temp because this is just our variable so we don't need that. I'm going to hit return here. This is the actual effect that is manipulating our footage. So in front of that I will just enter value plus and then temp comma temp. Temp is just uh, this variable here so this means x and the, and the other temp means y. So um, well yeah your first value and your second value I'm going to just mute my audio here so you don't actually hear it but if we're going to play this back you're going to see that it's constantly moving and this is a little bit too much uh, for what I want so what I will do now is go back to my slider here and change these values like everything below 60 is going to be 0 and everything above like 80 or 70 it's going to be 100 so we have the minimum and the maximum so now I want to change the values for our actual keyframes so I'll alt click here on my slider and now we have our effect we can actually delete this and I'm going to write a, an expression called linear open parentheses value so actually it's going to linearly change every value in here and then I'm going to open well comma and everything that's for example um, under 40 comma everything that's above 80 comma 40 becomes 0 comma and everything that's 80 becomes 20 for example close it if you're not following along so it's actually overlooking each step 40 becomes 0 and 80 becomes 20. The reason why 80 becomes 20 is because 80 is a little bit too intense because currently we're actually looking at the scale, so the value of the scale meaning 100% plus the actual value here. So uh, 100 plus 80 would be 180 and that would be uh, zooming in a little bit too intense to my preferences. So I think that like 120% uh, of zoom on each beat is going to look a little bit, de um, well, it's going to look better and then everything below 40 is just going to uh, affect zero on the scale, which means that it's not going to affect anything. So if we're going to preview this, uh, we can immediately see that it's not doing anything if there's no beat drop. So I'm going to just press double L here so we can actually see uh, visually what we're doing here so we have no base drop here we do and that's zooming in here so if I preview this you can see that it's now affecting only when the um, base is in the scene here so um, now we're affecting the scale and of course if you're going to change the values here in the linear like if you change it to 85 it's going to pick up a little bit less of these values you can even go like 90 if it actually passes 90 I'm not sure but just play around with these values until you're satisfied with something like now it's going to affect a little bit less you can also go like 20 I want this to become 10 and just do it like that but I kind of like 25 maybe and what you can do as well is just duplicate your original footage and then just um, alt click on the scale here so we have one footage with just 100 scale and then one footage that it's actually manipulating by the scale and if you press T on the keyboard and lower the opacity here for example you're going to get this nice um, yeah distortion effect here that uh, a lot of videos use and you can also go and toggle the switches and apply some motion blur for the scale here so um, if it's scaling up and also uh, well enable motion blur for that layer and also enable motion blur for the composition and if we are going to solo this you're going to see that um, motion blur gives this kind of effect which is pretty cool and then you're going to get this kind of overlay look that is also um, giving you some nice results 
What I've also done in the preview is I added a little bit of um, blur. So I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And here we can do any kind of effect. We can go for blur and apply a Gaussian blur, for example. So uh, let's go for Gaussian blur and apply this to our adjustment layer. Just check repeat edge pixels and then alt click on the value for the blur and just pick the slider effect here. And now on the beat again, it's going to blur it um, well pretty pretty heavily here. So we can actually see that. Uh, we can also go in our effect here for our blur and at the end of our expression we can multiply it or uh, divide it by an amount. So if you think this is a little bit too heavy or you want more blur, if you multiply it by 10 for example, it's going to multiply this value by 10 and it's going to be uh, affecting a lot more to your footage as you can see right here. So um, of course we have to drag this below our border. Uh, but now you have a lot like blur on the beat. You can also do the same for exposure, for example. If you want it to be flashing a little bit, add an exposure tag, go and alt click on the exposure and apply this to our slider and let's preview this. Yeah, of course, and this is a little bit too much. So what you want to do is divide it here by two, for example, or by four. And now you get something like this, some flashes, maybe even a little bit too much still. So maybe divided by six. Actually, this can be uh, 80, but I'm going to change the 40 to something like 70. So everything below 70 is going to be zero. So it's not going to affect so much now. Okay, this is a lot better. So now we get these nice flashes on the actual high beats here. So playing around with these values is going to turn up with your result that you're after. But yeah, that is basically it. Uh, you can fade it, you can uh, add these like black cuts, um, some flashes of brightness, some blur, some scale, whatever floats your boat. All right, so you can do a lot of cool things with this. Um, let your cre creativity flow. And if you have any kind of result, be sure to leave the link in the comments below. I would love to see what you can come up with uh, using this technique. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>